Good evening, High Point Church. Uh, Pastor Keith and Jennifer here. We are taking a mission trip uh, all the way to the other side of the world, exactly 12 time zones away, uh, to the Philippines in Manila with some of our dear friends, Pastor Paolo and Jen Punzalan, who lead Victory Church there. And uh, they are taking some time out of their morning after a, a coffee and a bike ride to uh, tell us a little bit about what things are uh, like in the Philippines. So uh, we are super excited. Pastor Paolo, thank you so much. And Jen, for being with us on our evening virtual mission trip. Hello. Uh, good morning or good evening. Uh, thank you for having us. <laughs> good morning from sunny Manila today. We're happy to be with you. Well, it's so good to have you with us again uh, yes. because you were here last summer uh, as if many of our High Point folks and some of our other North American churches watching. Uh, we hosted here in Orlando our Every Nation World Conference, and uh, we had the great privilege of having uh, Pastor Paolo and Jen and their uh, amazing kids with mm -hmm. us and uh, preached on a Sunday morning, so still one of the more impactful messages uh, from our pulpit. So it's great to have you with us again. Yeah, thank you for having me. Familiar. You were in this very <laughs> lobby just one year ago, and I know it's two years in the future, but we look forward to our Every Nation family getting together in Manila in 2022 for our next World Conference. Yes. We love being part of a global spiritual family. So, in anticipation, just want you to know, I'm wearing my Thrilla in Manila <laughs> t-shirt. That's right. The legendary uh, Ali Frazier fight. And in fact, the World Conference, when it's in Manila in two years, will it be in Aaron, Araneta Coliseum? Very possible. We'll see. We're still ironing out details, maybe. Ah, oh, fantastic. Awesome. Well, as you know, because uh, you've been to our church, something important to High Point and the fabric of our faith community is going on mission, of course, locally, and of course, uh, in our neighborhoods and in our, you know, just the places and the people that we see on a regular basis. But it's also important us to go globally on mission trips. We normally go on a few a summer. We've really felt the call to the Caribbean and Cuba, but we've also gone to other nations as well. So in the void of not being able to travel right now, um, we're, our hopes is that we could uh, take our people on a trip right there to where you are in Manila. So would you even just maybe paint a picture for us of, of what it's like there? Um, yeah, tell what's us a day like? Church, what's your church your like? City. Just kind of what would we experience if we just landed on the plane for a mission trip? Yeah. Oh, so our church, the, where, uh, the, the one we serve in is actually in a city called Taguig. It's in the central business district of Manila. So you can imagine how busy it is during the day and during the weekdays because so many people come to work there. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, Taguig is, or well, right at the heart of Taguig is what you would call BGC, uh, Bonifacio Global City. And so that's, uh, as Jen said, it's a central business district, but are surrounding it are uh, uh, communities also about 800,000 people uh, population now. And so there's a lot of campuses there's a lot of um, obviously offices as well, and then uh, and and, uh, condominium and, and condominium units. Yeah. So uh, during the day, it's pretty busy. Not these days, okay. But uh, everybody's working from home. But uh, usually, it's really full. Um, that city, the small. It used to be an army camp. BGC was an army camp. Uh, Bonifacio is one of our national heroes, and so that's what it's. It's Fort Bonifacio before. And so that became Bonifacio Global City. And so what turned, uh, what was uh, a place where there were no civilians, now it's turned into a city, a small city within the city. Uh, so it's grown to zero to about 90,000 residents in that small area right there. Wow. So a city within a city, because we know obviously Manila is it's one of the top 20 largest cities in the world. In fact, you have, for, for those of us in North America, when we think large city, we immediately go to, New York, and there's, I think, four or five million more citizens and residents in Manila than there even is even in New York City, just to give perspective of a business district and how hustling and bustling and densely populated it is. So you've got a large city with kind of churches and campuses all throughout, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, in the area we're in, uh, there are about nine, nine to ten campuses that we're ministering to right now. Yeah, high school and uh, university. So we had the privilege of being at the fort and, and actually getting to be at the, the services that you lead. Yeah. Um, but how would you describe for High Point 
folks, how, what, what is distinctive? Um, surely there's distinctives together we have because we're every nation, but what would be something distinctive and unique that we would see when we'd come to services at, at Big Tree? Huh. Um, I'm trying to think because High Point is so much like our church. <laughs> when, when we visited last year, uh, it was very warm and friendly. Um, I don't, what, what's something distinct? Yeah, well, you know, when you come to the church, um, we have many services during weekend, uh, uh, about 17. Uh, and it starts from a Friday. Definitely <laughs> different than about High Point. 17. We're at three right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well. Weekend services. Because, Wow. Not because of the variety of people that, you know, Friday there's a youth service, Saturday there are youth services, and then there's, there's the Tagalog service and the English service. And so it, what's interesting is a varied, um, in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, differences of um, backgrounds and, uh, you know, where they come from. And so that's, that's been a, a quite, quite a unique from a, uh, people who own businesses and people who work for those businesses are quite varied. So that's uh, Tagalog speaking, English speaking, um, and so yeah. So that's why there's a there's a lot of services that would cater to different people. Wow, fantastic! What um, so so you're you're reaching a wide range of people, which seems to really be a, a hallmark of us in every nation. You walk into just about any of our churches, and you you can feel the nations, and you can hear different languages and, and see different ethnicities. What, what are some of the, the things that you guys are doing to reach a, a wide ranging population there, a diverse culture? Um, well, we have like, as Paula said, we have different services. So we have English services, because uh, a, lot, a lot of the people in our, our area, the area that we're in, are they're Filipinos but English speakers it's more of their first language but we also have Tagalog services for those who have Tagalog as their first language so aside from that we have different services that cater to senior citizens to married people to single men and women um, you can add more yeah um, and then and then I think uh the the range like what you said the wide range uh, there are like we have a ministry that uh, reaches out to drivers taxi drivers grab drivers or uber drivers um, those kinds of and so uh, from low income to again like what i said to those who because uh, you know um, as as many of you know uh, the philippines uh, is still a developing nation and uh, we do have a lot of people coming from uh, low income families so uh, that's that's the wide range that uh, we're talking about here. People who um, own uh, their own businesses, and to those who are, uh, you know, I guess um, uh, they 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 work for the day so that they can feed their family for that day. Yeah. Wow. So is, that kind of maybe even uh, segues into a question I've had, which would be. If we were there on mission, or even as your church, what are what are the needs that you sense in your community, kind of overarching? What are the needs of the people of either Manila or the Philippines in general, and how are you kind of trying to meet those as a church? Yeah, um, I, I know that. Uh, well, number one is we're really heavily involved in campus, and so because we're heavily involved in campus. Um, that would be a huge need now. Uh, Jen, you would say like a mental health, right? So, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, because of what we're going through, yeah, people are very stressed and anxious. Um, being uh, from from our in this part of the world, I I don't know how how things are. I think things are being handled differently. So uh, there's a lot of anxiety going around and fear. So that's been an opportunity for the gospel, actually, because people are hungry. Uh, they're needing comfort and assurance right now. So we've had, like since the quarantine started, we've had Monday talks online. And yeah, I think one, one of those Mondays we invited you guys, right? Yeah, we so. enjoyed being there on your yeah. thing. Thank goodness it's Monday. Was that what it was? 
Yeah, thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Monday, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just even in following both of you and your church on Instagram, uh, just seeing the ways you're meeting the needs, it seems like frontline workers are very important to your church. I feel like I've seen just um, prayer meetings that's all that have been there for them, the way you're serving them. Um, it's really been inspiring for me personally. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's something that we're doing in our month on mission is to spend a week focusing on those essential and frontliners coming up later in our month. So could you tell us a little more about that? Because that might inspire us even what we're doing here. Yes. Um, last March when lockdown happened here, um, uh, we're still on quarantine. <laughs> we're, we're, we went back to quarantine. <laughs> we went back to quarantine because really our, our, our city is densely populated and just, uh, again, that that's the that's the tension between public health and national economy and so that's been just the tension of people wanting to work because they're needing to work and it's not like it's a luxury to stay at home uh, like what I said they work for the day to feed the family for that particular day and so they have to go out the kind of thing and so again the dense uh, population is that's been a challenge and and so because of that the frontliners also have been challenged because the cases are unfortunately rising and we don't want the healthcare system to collapse as a result and so we've been praying for them in fact there was a time during the lockdown last last march when because we did not have services it was all online uh, we opened up the church facility for because the the bonifacio global city there are two major hospitals that are about three to five kilometers away from where we are. And so, but because it, there was a public transport shutdown at that time, uh, the health workers could not go home. They, you know, some of them travel and they go outside Manila to go home to their, to their houses. And so we offered our place and we, you know, our church, the church members wonderfully, um, responded with generosity, provided mattresses, beds, uh, even washing. washing machines and dryers so that the frontline workers could sleep in our facility in the assembly hall in the in the in the sanctuary uh, with those beds with proper distance and protocols and all that and then wash their clothes there and so that they're just three kilometers away um, and then we had the shuttle service for them we had a church van bring them back and forth uh, start of the day end of the day so that they can have a good rest um, and so, so that they can go back to work the next day. Wow. Yeah, but what's interesting too was while they were in our facility, some small group leaders came to do one to one with them. Yeah, yeah, in prayer meetings. So, yeah, we saw a lot of people actually come to faith in Christ. Our frontline workers have come to faith in Christ as a result, and so that's been that's been really uh, a blessing. And then another one, if I can add, um, we we do have a lot of. Uh, um, people who work outside Manila or outside the Philippines. They're, they're overseas Filipino workers or the OFWs. And so uh, they, some of them started, or many of them started to come back home because they've lost their jobs uh, from out of the country. And some of them were planning to go out of the country uh, to work. But because of airplanes and air, you know, the, uh, right. flights were canceled, they had to be, uh, they, 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 they were stuck in Manila and they, they're now called the like locally stranded individuals, the LSIs, the locally stranded. So many of them are in the Philippines or in Manila rather. Uh, a lot of them are stuck in, 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 in gyms, basketball gyms or, or uh, very temporary shelters. Uh, some of them are stuck in the port. Really? Uh, so, yeah. They're Since March in, for some of them? I'm sorry? Since March for some of them? Some of them, uh, some of them, yes, since March. Uh, so because the flights are very limited, so they can't go back to their provinces, which is about you know uh, a two hour, like a two hour flight from Manila, and so they're stuck in Manila. And so now uh, it's an opportunity. It's been an opportunity also for us to to send care packages and preach the gospel to them and have small groups with them. And so this Saturday we'll come back again and we'll visit them. So every week, almost every week, we're going back um, and, and sending uh, help, uh, mattresses, pillows, uh, toiletry kits, hygiene kits, and food. Uh, again, just um, there's gospel uh, uh, declaration, but there's also gospel demonstration that we're seeing. 
sounds like so you're doing great. that in an amazing way. Yeah, I've always been so impressed with your church and that you've, you, you guys have had a, a real pulse on the community and you've been the kind of church that your community has turned to uh, in moments of, of need and you've been so responsive and not been very responsive to meet the needs, but also very quick as well with the, the gospel, with the ultimate need. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me ask you this, because I know one of the things that, that within our every nation world, your, your church and the Victory Churches are known for is discipleship and small groups. And um, how have you managed to continue to make disciples and to help people grow spiritually when you can't be around each other at the same time? I mean, man, if you go anywhere in the world, the most hospitable people you'll run into are the Filipinos. I agree. And they just will open their home and cook a meal. And, you know, there's always friends and extended family around. And that's something you're having to navigate with a, a, a lockdown. Tell me about how you're still managing to help people grow spiritually and um, make disciples. Um, I, I guess it's the new normal now right we we try to engage online and our filipinos yeah yeah as you said we're we're very much into relationships <laughs> and we we will just do what we can right to continue that to cultivate that so a lot of us have had to learn this technology <laughs> zoom and and all other platforms where we can stay connected and it's it's interesting how this um this situation has really opened doors for new uh, victory groups or small groups to start because we hear stories from our small group leaders who's who reunited with their high school friends and college friends and even family that they haven't uh, been in touch with but somehow it opened up opportunities to you know initially just offer a Bible verse or offer a prayer. And then these things um, became small groups in the end. So yeah, we just, we, tr we try what we can uh, with the technology that God has given us. You know, it's uh, also interesting how um, engaging uh, new people have, uh, you know, gone beyond borders. Uh, normally, you know, we would just uh, reach out to them, you know, like this face to face. But uh, this this uh, opportunity has been given to us. I remember uh, um, uh, somebody who's uh, been posting a lot of her, like I guess, her thoughts on scripture and her thoughts on insights about the Bible. Uh, she would do videos online, and uh, somebody from Nepal, a single mom, reached out to her and said, uh, it's interesting what you're talking about. Uh, can we talk about that some more? And so she's doing one-on-one -on -one discipleship now with this single mom. And then after that, somebody from Quebec in Canada reached out to her, a young professional, and said uh, that what you shared was interesting. Could you share more about that? And they're doing one-to-one -one discipleship now. And then uh, somebody from India reached out to her. Uh, this girl's name is Kimberly, the one who was posting uh, videos online. And so from India, she spoke to a, in a youth summit uh, of 13 to 25 year olds uh, who were going through depression and who were going through anxiety attacks and and she talked about uh, uh, what God can do even through the pandemic and so it's just it's just crazy how the Lord's opened up all these opportunities so I love hearing you say opportunities because I, I think we can if we're not careful we can get myopic and just mm -hmm. kind of see the challenges in front of us um, when really Yes, they exist, but the opportunities, God is, is always in every season and every location providing opportunities for us to, you know, share his love with people. So that's awesome. So imagine if we could, we weren't in the middle of a, of a pandemic and we weren't under COVID and we would have arrived at a mission trip. What are some things um, we would partner with what you do there to serve the community. So where are, um, you'd mentioned not only gospel proclamation, but gospel demonstration. If we, in a non-COVID era, what are some um, things that uh, you do or we would join with you if we were on a mission trip? Um, yeah, as uh, Paula has said, we're involved in campus work with at least nine campuses in our area. So that will be one. Uh, we, when missionaries come, we set up talks for them. We go to the schools and engage the students. 
Uh, for some reason, um, foreign missionaries have a lot of appeal to Filipinos. <laughs> We're very drawn to you guys. So even <clears throat> just the, the simplest act of engaging with our students, talking to them, going out for coffee or a burger, that really means a lot and it really opens hearts to the gospel. Yeah, engaging the campus, also the professionals, because since we're in the central business district, we've been doing a lot of um, talks now because of what's going on, right? And even before, pre-COVID, pre uh, we do a lot of uh, talks because it's interesting that the government released a, um, I, I think it's a memorandum talking about that every office uh, has to talk uh, has to talk about um, moral values, and they have to provide trainings for uh, to to redeem and restore values. And so um, that's when we're able to come in actually and uh, bring in you know biblical values. And so uh, because of that memorandum, uh, we're now in, in different offices in in BGC. Uh, from our telecom, ma the major telecom in the Philippines, and even just uh, different um, BPOs uh, 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 like the call centers, and so it's it's uh, it's a it's a, an amazing opportunity. So even pre-COVID and even now, post uh, during COVID, we do a lot of talks, webinars online for them as well, and so professionals, and then for families also. We're, we're Philippine Philippines wide that that. Uh program you were just re referencing yeah philippines wide wow and then to be also to be honest um <clears throat> um we're very near because the victory fort is is uh, in a, a, uh in a, in the place where it used to be a army camp but the army headquarters is still very near us and so that also is an opportunity um but majorly <clears throat> um family ministry is a a, a need because um, you know the, the the husbands get sent out to you know different places and provinces and so marriage sometimes has become there have been challenges in the marriage and even in parenting and so that's a that's a major need now as well and so that's a, also an opportunity uh, for for if ever you when you come not if ever but when you come oh, <laughs> can't wait till the next time we're yeah. able to come back T t tell us a little bit about the, the rest of the country. So you guys are in, again, the, 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 the population hub of the whole nation. Uh, your version of, a, you know, again, our parallel would be a, a New York City. Um, but the Philippines is a wide ranging uh, string of islands. T tell us a little bit about the rest of the country. Um, it's very, uh, very rural outside Manila. We have, I think, three, at least three major cities all over the Philippines. Actually, only three, right, if you think about it. But a lot of the places are in the islands. That's where you, you go for the beach experience, right? Uh, but basically, people, wherever you go, people would, are very warm, very hospitable. They're very open. Uh, in terms of uh, our churches, how many churches do we have? We have uh, 103 Six. outside of Manila now. There are... Um, how many regions? I'm so sorry. I forgot geography. But we're, Victory now is scattered all over the Philippine map from the north to the south. But, but it's still uh, a lot of work to be done. But we're there and, and we're growing slowly yeah that's a major opportunity still also because uh, manila is about 15 million and balloons to about 20 uh, during the week because um, people from outside come in manila but but we're a total uh, a total population is about 105 110 million so if you think about it uh there's 90 plus million outside Manila uh, that is still waiting to be reached, and so, um, uh, and so it's 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 a major uh, opportunity. So we do have 100 plus, but that sounds a lot, but that's not nearly enough. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Gosh, that's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. 
Tep, um, so, so you guys are obviously very active within your country. What, what role does missions play, global missions outside of uh, the Philippines play for, for your church? Well, that's, uh, you know, to be honest, we, we, are, we were birthed because of missions. Uh, our fa- founding pastor, Steve Murrell, uh, together with Rice Brooks and Alma Namtam and all about 60, 65 Americans came over to the Philippines in 1984. And so we understand global missions. Um, I remember, uh, this is just stories because I was not in, in victory at that. I wasn't uh, a Christian at that time yet. And so um, I remember they were saying, Pastor Steve would say there was a global map in the first um, uh, venue that we were in it was a basement of a cinema and uh, we would have that map there and a lot of the students there were about a hundred plus students that were attending victory at that time and so many of them have never even been outside Manila or even outside Luzon the main the main island of the Philippines and so to say you're going one day you're gonna be going out of the country why because we're gonna go reach the nations for Jesus and so you need a Bible and the passport. Bible to know the Word of God, to know the will of God. Passport to obey the will of God because God said, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the good news. And so, <clears throat> so a lot of the students, Ferdi Kabiling, June Escosar, you, you hear some of these names now, uh, Manny Carlos, uh, got their passports um, and their parents were saying, why are you getting a passport? You're still in college or where are you going? Oh, I'm going to breach the nations for Jesus. Uh, it sounded radical and crazy, but um, to be honest, right now, uh, we are out of 52 Asian nations, including Central Asia, we're, we're in about 42 nations now, and we have, um, we have Filipino missionaries in every single one of them. And so it's just uh, uh, the, the seeds that were sown, the mission, we, we, were, we were a receiving nation, but now we're actually a sending nation, and that's been just uh, uh, that's something that's been pounded on over and over and over by our leaders, and we're grateful for that. We don't want to just be somebody who's just receiving, but we want to be somebody who's giving. Absolutely, and I think you say the same that yeah. we desire for our church as well. Um, wow, that's fantastic. Um, it's kind of looking at time, but maybe oh, yeah. um, t- tell us a little bit about so so. Um, we've got folks that have been with us for a while here at High Point, and again, we've got some of our other uh, friends from Every Nation Churches around North America. Uh, we have some that are newer and kind of hear this thing, Every Nation, and and wonder how we have relationships in the in the Philippines and different places. T- tell us from your perspective um, some of the benefits uh, of being engaged and involved with a, a global spiritual family. Oh. Well, we realize that more than ever now. Uh, like, you know, we, first of all, we feel uh, we belong to a bigger organization, right? That we're not alone in our small part of this world. And it just means a lot for us to know that people across the globe are praying with us, are praying for us and standing with us. and. Uh, we get different kinds of help also from all from the churches all over the world um, and now we get uh, wisdom from you guys when it was so hard to you know to find that before now it's with a click of a button and we're connected right via zoom or just uh, whatever on the internet and we get to benefit from from the things that we can learn from you guys so it i think it's amazing to know that we're connected with a global movement yeah two things i love the relationships i just really appreciate that um we had adam maybury we had timothy law we just just a global family it just it's just fun to be part of a global family guys those of you are watching it's just sometimes we get so ingrown 
we get so in, internal or just uh, looking in, inward and just like, uh, oh, what, what's our life here in Manila? What's like our life here in Orlando? We're all, all. But there's a world out there, a uh, number one who's part of our global family and there's a world out there who need Jesus Christ. And so number one is relationship. Number two is just perspective to understand that, you know, in Revelation 7 verse 9 says, you know, when we all face Jesus, um, when we're before the king, uh, every tribe, nation, language, people group will be there. It's not just going to be Filipinos, it's not just going to be Americans. It's just every tribe and people group and nation and tongue will be there worshiping Jesus, the King of all kings. And it's just, it, it's exciting to me to think about that and just being able to even connect more now. Uh, before, you know, you had to go to another location to see Pastor Keith and Jennifer. But now we can just meet online and, and this has been just phenomenal. Uh, just amazing to, to see these uh, global family and relationships. Yeah. I, I love so much. I, I think one of the things I, I love most about being part of a family is the, we do things in family. So even hearing you're in 42 of the 52 uh, Central Asian mm -hmm. nations, that means we're, we're there, right? So we're, we're on our little peninsula in, in a small town in just outside of Disney World, <laughs> but we're in Nepal because, and, and you guys are doing things now in Cuba with us and um, because we pray together and we sew together and we train together and we believe God together and we've chosen by God's goodness to, to walk together like we get to experience each other's victories. And um, I think that's one of my favorite things. And then two, the, the relationships, you think of when we get to go on mission trips, any of us at High Point that have been on a mission trip, there's there's nothing like the, the bonding with the team that goes and then the people you get to meet. You know, we've got dear friends uh, all around the world from the trips that we've taken. And to think, you know, Paulo, you and I met two decades ago, I believe, on a, yeah. on a mission, a basketball mission trip back when I could yeah. still run, um, yeah. you know, and it's crazy to think, you know, I mean, I was just a, recently out of playing basketball and you were kind of coming up in ministry and here, you know, and, and it's just been neat to be able to minister there and have you here and um, the friendships that get uh, built in a, in a global family is just nothing like it. I agree. Yeah. Well, we don't have too much time left. I just wanted to say one quick thing, but then yeah. um, we want to close with how we can continue to pray for you. We've um, had pray, posted some prayer points yesterday, but um, for those of you who are watching this um, High Point folks, um, I would encourage you to do exactly what Pastor Paulo said, which mm -hmm. is to get a Bible and get a passport. Hopefully you yeah. already have them both yeah. um, and get a globe or a map because yeah. I would um, start now dreaming what nations God may want you to go yeah. to. And you might be surprised. I know I've been at the places God has allowed me to go. And we have some members of our church, though, who traveling may not be um, the this, this stage of life that they're at. Mm -hmm but you can still actively engage with what we're doing because I know y'all are prayer warriors yep. and hopefully you can still even appreciate the relationships that you're seeing um, here on our screen and the different people that come through High Point, you're a part of that as well. So I just would ask not only for this to be a moment where we've gotten to spend with our friends, Pastor Paolo and Jen, but that it would be a reminder to all of us that um, we are part of something really, truly amazing and to dream locally for sure, but dream even bigger as well. So um, yeah. as we do that, um, how can we keep you at the forefront of our minds, uh, guys? What can yeah, we pray? Yeah. What can we be believing for your family, for, for, for you your city, for your church? Or for yeah. your church? Yeah, anything. Uh, I, I love the prayer points that you posted yesterday, actually reposted that <laughs> also. Uh, but yeah, we primarily we need a lot of wisdom, wisdom for our government to make uh, the best decisions for our nation to come up with concrete plans to uh, you know to to get us back up on our feet we also need wisdom for the church uh, we've, we've said it many times in the last few minutes it's it has given us an amazing opportunity to reach the lost and people are open and hungry so we want to uh, be on top of our game and constantly think of new ways, new strategies to reach out to the lost. And also protection for our family. It's getting closer and closer. Not right now we have news that there's more cases in the village that we live in. My brother and his wife recently got COVID but recovered, thankfully. 
Uh, so continuous protection. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think also for, I was, uh, just on a final note, um, I, I was reading an article about, um, uh, about the 1918 pandemic and the Spanish influenza. And it was a time there was a church um, that, you know, it was similar. All the churches had to close down. Um, businesses, stock market uh, crashed. But what happened was the church continued to move forward. And there was one church that remained open and uh, continued to do gospel uh, proclamation and demonstration. And so my prayer for the church is this, is that, you know, 100, that was 100 years ago, the 1918 pandemic, a little over 100 years. 100 years from now, this pandemic is going to be in the history books. Yeah. And what will, the, what will history say about the church? And so for me, it just, when, I, when that question was, I don't know, dropped in my heart, I said, Lord, let it be that, that the church, I'm not just talking about victory. I'm not just talking about uh, every nation. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Lord, let it be that the church uh, would be, what would be said about the church is that we were in the forefront. We were there, yes, preaching the gospel, but we're also demonstrating the gospel. And so that, that, that would that kept me uh, uh, kept as a chat is kept as a challenge in my heart and that's why we keep doing what we're doing and we will continue to make disciples we will continue to do small groups we will continue to do uh, our victory weekends and and reach people for Christ but also to, to you know if if for one day um, you've been to our building uh, pastor Keith and Jennifer if for one for one reason the building will be I don't know, there's an earthquake or whatever. Uh, the building is no longer there. The question was asking, I kept asking, I asking myself, will the community uh, miss hmm. the church if we're gone? You know, it's like, you remember that? There was a building there. They will just, will they just say, ah, what, what's that? Was that like a United Nation or All Nation or Every Nation? Or will they say, God, I, 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 I wish, uh, I'm grateful for that church and you know, to that effect, I just looking forward and, and I pray that the Lord will continue to help us navigate through all this and we would be able to pivot and be nimble uh, and stay agile through all of this. And, and, you know, things change from day to day, from month to month, but we would remain flexible and agile through this and that we would hear, be sensitive to the Spirit of God and say, Lord, wherever you lead, we will follow. Amen. Amen. So if, if, you're, if you've got a few more minutes, we'll, we'll pray for you, but I want... Uh, I want to uh, high, high point. You've uh, got your prayer points right there for at least the week, if not the rest of the year. And uh, you've got your marching orders, proclamation and demonstration. Yes, thank you for that. And I don't know, honestly, guys of anybody around the globe that, that lives that more than you two and mm -hmm. the people that you've raised up in your church, you demonstrate the love of God, wherever you go. Uh, we feel it when we're with you, uh, the hospitality, but, and, and the ripples, uh, all throughout your nation and throughout uh, your global region is is amazing. And the fact that, you know, you don't just love well, you and you don't just live well, man, you also call people up and out, out of death and into life. So we truly appreciate you. Why don't you pray for their family? I'll pray for, I'll pray for the wisdom uh, for them. And then you pray for their family and protection. Sure. And we, <laughs> all right. We'll pray for pray, Father, thank you so much for our, our, uh, our dear friends, Paulo and Jen, Father, I thank you for your amazing love for them, O oh God, which knows no limits and knows no bounds. And Father, I just uh, so appreciate uh, their hunger for you, uh, God, their desire to see you made known uh, in the earth. And Father, I thank you so much. And I'm just always challenged, even by their humility. Uh, God, if the people here and listening understood the size and scope of the work uh, that they're leading, God, our jaws would be on the floor. Yet they... Uh, continue to simply uh, grow and learn and ask of you for wisdom. And what I thank you for, God, is that you say in your word, if any of us lacks wisdom or needs wisdom, we just need to simply ask. And God, you will uh, give it to us in great measure. So Father, I agree with uh, Jen's prayers, God, for wisdom for the government leaders in the Philippines. Uh, Father, um, what we're feeling here, God, with lockdown and economic uh, challenge and strain, God, they're feeling in spades over there. And God, I pray that you would, in these densely populated uh, cities, oh God, that you would give their leaders 
wisdom from heaven, uh, Father, on how to, number one, keep people safe uh, while simultaneously uh, helping with economic security and the, the image of God in them desiring to go out and work and create and be productive. God, I pray that you'd give them uh, ideas from heaven, uh, Father, on how to navigate that. And for uh, Apollo, as he's leading the, the church and his uh, team and God, all the decisions they're having to make and um, uh, keep thousands and tens of thousands of people connected and, and engaged and communicated with, with when technology there is just different than it is here. And um, God, I pray that you would give this great man the wisdom that you gave to Solomon when he asked for wisdom to be able to lead his people well. God, I pray you would grant wisdom to Pastor Paulo and his team to lead your people well, uh, both through this critical time, through this challenging time, and God, through the opportunities that you're presenting uh, to them. Father, I thank you for the way they've been innovative and are bringing in people from uh, around the world, God, to, to encourage. I thank you for their, uh, uh, their ability to see uh, the hearts and minds of where their people are and the strains and the stresses. And, um, God, I'm thanking you, sir, that you would help he and his team figure out how to work that. While at the same time, God, bless them. Father, I pray, uh, just I, I know the burdens they carry as pastors, um, God, and I pray that you would refresh them in an extraordinary supernatural way. As surely as they've inspired and refreshed us even this evening, God, that you would inspire them. God, you would refresh them. God, you would be with them. God, your presence and your spirit and your goodness and your grace uh, would rest on them in an exceptional way during this stretch in Jesus' name. And God, we pray for the Puzlan family. <laughs> Lord God, we pray for their health. Uh, God, even as um, things may be coming near to them in their village, Lord God, that nothing will, will come That's to right. them. God, just as your word says that even, even though um, things may be on their right or their left, God, you will, you will cover them um, yes. with health. And uh, even not only their physical health, Lord God, but um, em emotionally and spiritually and mentally as well. I know that they're back on quarantine and back in close quarters. So God, I just ask that you would even supernaturally find creative ways for them to continue to connect as a family and continue yeah. to enjoy each other's company. And uh, that they are really a, um, a city on a hill, a beacon of light to so many. Um, that they and their and their children both encourage so many people. Um, God, would you just continue to open doors for them to be bring the gospel? Yeah. Um, they're amazing. We count them a treasure, and we thank you for this time we've had together. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Gosh, all right. Sure do love you guys. It was great getting to spend an evening. Thanks. You're probably for... off to have breakfast if you haven't already. High <laughs> yeah. point. I just want to say you have amazing pastors. They are. They're loving, godly, and just very, very thoughtful. Please honor them. Pray for them always. Oh, thanks, y'all. Can't <laughs> wait till we get to be together in person again. Yes. I know our church has enjoyed this time with you. Yes. You mean the world to us. Absolutely. Love Bye. you guys. Love Bye. you too. Bye. Bye.